Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we shift slightly away from the vineyard and to another place called either the Lone Pine or the Lonesome Pine, depending on who you were and where you were from. British General Sir Harold Bridgewood Walker, along with a full Anzac Infantry Brigade supported by two battalions, went against Ottoman Commander Mehmet Esat Pasa and his two battalions with three additional regiments of support for five days in an area smaller than two soccer fields. This occurred between August 6th to the 10th, 1915. To answer the first question, the Lone Pine or Lonesome Pine was named for a single Turkish pine that stood in a battlefield in the beginning. The battle itself was near a hill known as 400 Plateau. The land itself was mild and flat between the two separate lines of trenches. The Australians were assembled mostly around what was known as the Pimple, a bulge in their trenches closest to the Turkish trenches. The attack was centered into a tiny area that was less than 500 feet wide and was dug into by Australian engineers before the attack with underground tunnels to help bring in reinforcements. In addition, the Australians unleashed a steady volley of artillery fire the day before specifically to destroy the barbed wire defending the Turks. And unlike earlier Hamilton-led attacks, they were able to destroy most of it. On August 6, 900 Australians charged across the 300 feet wide and 500 feet long of open distance, with another 900 traveling via the tunnels underground. They were additionally supported by Australian and New Zealanders firing from their own trenches. He saw, saw the attack and immediately commanded reinforcements to engage the Australians and began to call in Turkish artillery fire just as the Australians arrived at the Turk positions. Surprising everyone, the Australians had arrived with relatively light casualties, only to find the Turkish trenches had pine log roofs that were lashed down and difficult to get into. Eventually, the Anzac forces got into the trenches, but fearing shooting their own people, engaged in the most harshest hand-to-hand -hand fighting. After a short time, they had secured the trenches, but were unable to push through to the command area that Isat was in, known as the Cup. Instead of continuing the attack, the Anzac forces set up defenses and suffered three days of counterattacks by the Turks. For the next three days, while under attack, the Anzacs continued to build up their barricades to block the Turks. They were short in supplies and had to resort to using dead bodies. As the Turks entered the trench system from the other side in constant waves, the clash was brutal. The fighting was so close that grenades would sometimes bounce back and forth three or more times until they would detonate in a bizarre contest of hot potato. Even with the constant attacks, the Turks could not retake the trenches as the Australians and New Zealanders reinforced their positions. The Turkish attack morphed into days of throwing grenades into the trenches as the Turks began to receive more reinforcements themselves. While not able to retake those trenches yet again, they did push the Australians back a bit in order to give the cup some breathing room. The total stretch of ground that the Anzac forces had taken was less than 500 feet long and 300 feet wide, and General Walker believed this was a disaster. Ian Hamilton, who was still in charge overall at this time, however, declared that it was a desperately fine feat. It should be noted that Hamilton did not realize what negative impact this would have on his forces during the Battle of Chinook Bear, which we will cover later. One example of the horrors from the diary of Private Victor Laidlaw. Looking through the periscope, one can see quite well. Also, plenty of dead bodies can be seen. In fact, in the Lonesome Pine Trench, which we captured the Turks were lying there five feet deep, and our fellows had to fight standing on top of them. Bombs would make a still further mess of the corpses. Fleas were there in abundance, and beautiful large maggots are beginning to make their appearance. In fact, Captain Lynn of the 5th Battalion, medical officer, had been having some rest when all of a sudden he felt something soft in his trousers, and was horrified to see hundreds of these crawling maggots. Needless to say, he had made a hurried exit from those trenches. The end result was a loss of more than 2,280 Australian and New Zealand troops, and the Turkish troops losing at least 4,000 men. This happened over the size of a battlefield that was not quite the size of two soccer fields. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.